Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Recently, I have been getting a bunch of review offers for off-grid prepper and emergency survival products, things like solar panels, backup power, and water filters. It's almost like the market out there knows something about the future economic prospects of the United States. Anyway, today I'm taking a look at one of those water filters, the Itahill water purifier. It comes with reverse osmosis and hybrid filters, and this one even comes with a solar panel. They also sent me a TDS tester, or total dissolved solids meter, so I can use this along with some other test equipment to try to see how good is my water here at home, both tap water and rainwater, and how does it look before and after going through the filter system. Now even if you're not a doomsday prepper or think that society is about to collapse, it can be handy to have a reverse osmosis water filter around your home. Things like fish tanks, aquariums, pet water, even plant water can benefit from removing a lot of the chemicals that you find in tap water. So chlorine is not always great for plants or fish. There can be other additives in your tap water which are perfectly safe for humans but not great for exotic pets or exotic plants. And of course if you live off grid you might have water from a well, from a spring, or rainwater, and you might not know quite what is in that water supply. You don't necessarily want to drink straight rainwater. Birds poop on the roof, you get leaves and debris in the gutters rotting. Your barrels always kind of build up a weird green scum. There's always algae in there. As with all of my product reviews, I will try to be very fair and honest, give you all of the ups and downs, uh, positives and negatives about this product. Kind of reminds me of a futuristic space toaster. So it has a carry handle up here. It has a water port on one side and additional ports on the other side. Very simple control panel, USB port. That's really about it for the external features. It does have instructions here on top. So we have a slot for the reverse osmosis and the hybrid filter. The overall construction seems reasonably good. It's a little bit flimsy plastic, a little bit uh, lightweight, so I don't know how well this would hold up to being banged around uh, if you brought it out camping, if you brought it in a car or something. Um, this might be more suited to living at home and not uh, seeing a lot of transportation or a lot of uh, banging around into things. Our main box also comes with this accessory pack. We have some water hoses, we have two filter units. The reverse osmosis filter says that it will uh, remove contaminants like fluoride, lime scale, heavy metals, um, up to the standard of direct drinking water. It does say it is not suitable for seawater filtration, so you can't use this on a boat to get fresh water out of salt water, but that's not really what it's designed for. The hybrid filter says that it will remove sediment, rust, suspended matter, and other large particles, as well as organic matter, uh, carbon tetrachloride, trichloromethane, residual chlorine, and it improves the taste of odor removal. A um, little bit of funny translation there, but I think I get the idea. Filter tool or wrench, USB cable. We have a storage bag for all this stuff, and that comes with additional water hose. Now this seems to have a little pickup, so you could dump this into a bucket, a rain barrel, a stream, some other water source, and then hook that up to your uh, filter unit. Finally, we have an instruction manual. Now the main unit did not come with an actual power supply or wall outlet. We just have that USB cable, but we could run this from any power bank, uh, a USB-C solar panel, power station, or a wall charger. So it's pretty generic. Everything uses USB-C now, so it's not hard to find a power supply for that. The water flow is around 250 milliliters per minute, and the lifetime of each filter for the hybrid filter is 350 gallons, and the reverse osmosis filter is 650 gallons. And the unit does have some filter lifetime warnings. It has these lights on the side that will let you know when the reverse osmosis and the hybrid filter need to be changed. The manual is really super straightforward. There is not much to this. You basically just put in that inlet pipe in whatever your water source is, and the two outlet pipes here, the white one is for drinking water and the blue one is for domestic water, so washing, cleaning, etc. So this one is a little bit less filtered and this one is more highly filtered. The instructions on top of the unit mention a few other things, like it has an initial uh, charging cycle, so it will need to self-clean for just over half an hour when you first put in new filters, and then every time you turn it on after that it has about a 30 second uh, purge cycle, so uh, just something to keep in mind, you can't 
start drinking water out of this immediately, you have to wait about a half an hour after you install something new. And that's the same with your household um, pitcher filters. You basically have to soak those. And then the solar panel came as a separate unit. This is normally an accessory, so sold separately, but you can find this on their website along with the filter unit and extra filter cartridges. And I'll put all those links down below in the description. So I've reviewed a few of these solar panels, and this one is the first I've seen that actually has instructions and diagrams on the outside. So you can actually see how to hook this up, how to hook up parallel solar panels. That's pretty cool. And the accessory bag has a lot of cool stuff in it. This one actually comes with little carabiner clips. That is super nice. Most of the other solar panels I've looked at don't include any hardware for mounting. Not only carabiners, but suction cups. So you can actually mount this whole thing onto a window or onto the roof of a car. That's a really thoughtful idea. I also like the power outlet over here. It has uh, not only the regular old DC barrel jacks, it has just about every uh, power plug you could find for different laptops, different devices. The little charge controller box here has not just the DC barrel jack output, but it also has USB 2.0 and USB 3.0. We also have info on storage and waterproof rating. Otherwise, the solar panel itself is basically the same as other solar briefcases that I've looked at along these lines. It does have little fold-out feet on the back, so you can set it up at a 45 degree angle. I've noticed some of these have a tendency to blow over in the wind. This one is actually pretty heavy, so I think it would hold up pretty well to light wind, but if you're using it in an area of heavier wind, you might need to put some rocks on it or clip it down with the carabiners. Well, so far I'm pretty happy with the initial unboxing and general quality of these products. Like I said, the plastic here seems a little bit flimsy, but the solar panel definitely seems very rugged. I also really like the thoughtful touches like the storage bag here. It's nice to not have to store all the accessories in just a cardboard box in the basement where uh, mice might get into it. And it's nice to have all the instructions right on the outside of both the solar panel and the filter unit. So you don't really need to keep that manual with the product. You can just figure out how it works from what's right on the outside. So let's test the waters. I am not normally a science YouTuber, but I cannot resist an opportunity to wear the science glasses. Now this is not going to be super rigorous. I've cleared the room of major contaminants like the cats. We have two cups of source water here. We have tap water just straight out of the tap in my kitchen. And we have water from a rain barrel outside. We have a digital microscope to check these out. We also have a water uh, testing kit as well as that dissolved solids meter. Now in science, you're always supposed to have a control of some sort. So I have this jug of distilled water from the store and this actually gets used around the house in a humidifier for our snake. So we already had this on hand, but I thought it might make a good control for this experiment. Our tap water looks pretty clear, looks the same as the distilled water. It looks like water. Our rain barrel water has a definite color to it, a little bit greenish. We're still early in the spring. This hasn't really had a chance to sit around in warm weather and uh, I guess um, evolve. For the distilled water, we have 0002 parts per million of dissolved solids. Tap water, we have 175. And rainwater, 41. So for this test, each of these multi-test strips gets dunked into the water, and then we compare against the color key on here. So nothing too crazy so far. We have pretty clean tap water. It comes from the Mississippi River originally, but it goes through a really modern filtration plant. So I'm not surprised to see very few, if any, issues in there. The sodium chloride, I'm not 100% sure. It's a little bit uh, vague how to read the strips for that. It looks like there might be some extra salt in our uh, tap water, and that might be from the water softening process. There is a little bit of hardness in uh, both the tap water and the rainwater. There's more salt in the less hard water because I think salt counteracts hardness. This QAC QUAT number I had to look up as well. That's basically a disinfectant that's added to tap water and it makes sense that there's more of that in the city water than in the rainwater because we don't disinfect the rainwater. It looks like there's around 10 parts per million of that left over in the drinking water after it's gone through the treatment plant. Everything else on here looks pretty standard. There's a little bit of chlorine in the drinking water. It looks like uh, 1 ppm total and 5 ppm free. It doesn't quite add up to me. I don't know exactly how rigorous this test strip is, and it seems like there's no fluoride in the drinking water, which surprises me. I looked it up and St. Paul City Water does have fluoride added for dental health, so this test kit might not be the most accurate if fluoride is something you're worried about. And the IT Hill filter does claim to filter out fluoride, but 
unfortunately we won't be able to test for that because the test strips don't seem to show it. I was going to do the bacteria test, but they only gave me two with this kit, so I would only be able to do a before and after on one sample, and it takes 48 hours to 72 hours for this to actually register, so that's more time than I want to spend on the review, so we will not do these now. I'll save these for another project. I'm just going to go ahead and say if my water is green like it is out of the rain barrel, there's probably some bacteria in there, so we're not going to drink the green water. So here we have the different water samples under the microscope. As expected, the distilled water looks perfectly clear. I'm not seeing anything in there. The tap water is pretty clear. I see a tiny hair, which could have migrated in from my own environment. I don't think the hair came out of the tap. And then here we have the rainwater, and this is already much dirtier compared to the other two. There are some big green chunks of moss, algae stuff, uh, green stuff in here. And if we focus in carefully, we can see some little friends swimming around. So there are definitely critters living in the rainwater. Unfortunately, this microscope can't really get in close enough to see more detail than just little moving dots, but there are definitely moving dots in the rainwater, and that's kind of what I suspected, is that stuff lives in here. This is water that's been sitting outside. So now that we have all of our initial water quality tests, it's time to get the Ita Hill filter set up and see how it does with some of those water sources. I may have mentioned earlier that the unit has a built-in battery, so you can charge it from a USB-C, you can also charge it from that solar panel. I was hoping to use it outside and actually use the solar panel, but it's a pretty overcast rainy day, so we're just charging it from the house right now. Now the filter does vibrate a little bit, it does have a pump or a motor in it, and you can see it's kind of making everything on the table vibrate. And we are starting to get some water out. Alright, my little test setup here is absolutely not enough volume of water storage. I am going to need a couple buckets. Um, this thing pumps the water through pretty quickly. We are going from the bucket of kind of gross uh, rain barrel water, and we have our two outputs, uh, the drinking water and the domestic water. For this purge cycle, I'm just dumping them both into the same bucket. I'll use this to water some plants later. But once we're done with that 35 minute initial purge and setup, then we will put some uh, cups down there and we'll see what that output water looks like. Got a couple bubbles in there, but no little critters. Some of this stuff is just imperfections on the glass slide. That's there with or without the water. So our filtered rainwater has only 10 ppm, where it had 40 before, so it has reduced the total dissolved solids by three quarters. Now, scientifically speaking, do I trust the filtered water from that scummy rain barrel enough to drink it after it's gone through the IT Hill filter? Yeah, it tastes like water. Um, no discernible odor, no discernible flavor. So finally, let's test some filtered tap water from the IT Hill purifier. And I did let about two gallons of tap water run through it just to kind of flush things out a little bit after I'd done the rainwater. There's no real discernible taste difference between regular tap water and filtered tap water. Looks good on the microscope, just a couple bubbles and the same scratches on the slide. 6 ppm uh, TDS, so much, much less than the tap water we started with, and actually less than the rainwater that we filtered. So, let's look at the results. Now, there were not a lot of contaminants in my water to start with. The tap water is very clean, aside from some expected things like chlorine and that disinfectant. Surprisingly to me, my barrel water was pretty clean, aside from a few little swimming science friends and obvious uh, algae matter. There weren't a lot of chemicals, there wasn't a lot of stuff in the rainwater, which we don't have a lot of acid rain, we don't have a lot of uh, pollution in the air around here, as far as I can tell. And the rainwater, other than growing some microorganisms because it's sitting around in a barrel outside, is pretty clean to start with but we definitely cleaned up both of those by running them through the filter. While a lot of my numbers were either zero or well below any kind of range of concern, we did have a couple uh, chemicals and additives that definitely decreased by running through the Ita Hill filter. Essentially, the total dissolved solids started out pretty high in the tap water, 175 ppm, and the Ita Hill filter dropped that down to 6 ppm, so it was very good at pulling out TDS. Now the big issue on the microscope, we saw no critters in our tap water, which I would hope so. We saw no critters in the distilled water, we saw no critters in any of the filtered water, 
but there were little swimming critters in the rain barrel water, and the IT Hill filter filtered those guys right out. pH didn't change too much. Now the test kit did pick up some of that quat or quack uh, sanitizer. That was about 10 ppm in the raw tap water. Um, after it went through the filter, it was down to 5 ppm, so it seemed like this cut it in half. Another couple variables that were higher in the tap water, uh, sodium chloride or salt, and that gets added at the treatment plant to deal with water hardness. That was around 250 ppm in the raw tap water. After going through the filter, it was closer to 100 ppm. Now, my rainwater had about 100 ppm of sodium chloride to start with, so I guess there's a little bit of salt in the atmosphere, or just in the rain barrel. I'm not quite sure where that comes from, but that dropped down to about 75 in the filtered rainwater, so it does seem like this takes salt out of uh, the water stream. Chlorine was also reduced by the Ita Hill filter. In the raw tap water, we had about 1 ppm of total chlorine and 5 ppm of free chlorine, which I'm not quite sure about those numbers. I would think total would be more than free, but again, I don't know if that's a, an issue with the test strips or um, if I'm just reading that wrong, but both of those numbers decreased after going through the filters. As far as the color, flavor, and taste, I did not flavor test the raw barrel water. That was just too gross for me, but I flavor tested everything else and it tasted fine, smelled fine, looked fine, basically was all indistinguishable after it had run through the filter. Um, the only other thing I really noticed in this, there was some manganese in, like 0.1 ppm manganese in the tap water that was still there after it went through the filter, but the distilled water came up with more manganese. It came up with about 1 ppm. So again, that could be an issue with the test strips. I don't know how accurate these are. A lot of these are very difficult to read. They are very subtle. Uh, color changes on the key here. So that could be uh, user error. I could be reading these wrong. It could just be that the test strips themselves are not super accurate. So take that with a grain of sodium chloride. I would say that, yeah, this seems like a good water filter. It definitely took out all of the contaminants that I would be worried about from musty, greenish old water barrel water. I would feel perfectly comfortable, and actually I did feel perfectly comfortable drinking water that had sat around in that water barrel for who knows how long, growing green slime, growing little floaty swimmy creatures. I ran that scummy water through the IT Hill filter, perfectly drinkable afterwards. So this would be a great way to get rainwater drinkable and usable around your household. Likewise, if you're worried about uh, domestic chemicals in your city water supply, things like chlorine, this seems to definitely reduce the amount of chlorine. It doesn't take it out completely, but it drops the level down quite a bit. Likewise, it drops the level of your sanitizers, like that quat stuff, and it drops the total dissolved solids. So if that is a major concern for you, if that is a metric that you're worried about, this definitely reduces the TDS number. So I'm looking forward to keeping this unit around. I will be using it probably uh, for camping trips or out at Sandland, and potentially even general everyday use if I want to start getting more use out of rain barrel water. So thank you again to IT Hill for sponsoring this video, for sending me the water filter. If you would like to check them out for yourself, all of the links will be down in the description, and you can uh, go over their website, pick up one of these with some of the accessories like the extra filters, the solar panel, and they have other stuff that you can check out as well. Finally, thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.